You will hear a new student, Stefan, talking to an assistant, Anna, at the student union about his membership. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 6. Hi, can I help you? Um, yeah, I hope so. Um, this is the first time I've been down to the Union. I'm a new international student and I just wondered what to do. Oh, right. Well, normally we ask international students to fill out this form and we put your details on the wall by reception. Then other students can contact you. It's a way for everybody to get to know each other. It can be a bit lonely otherwise. <laughs> oh, I see. What's your name? I'm Anna, by the way. It's Stefan Unger. OK, well, just write that there next to name uh -huh. and then fill in the rest. All right. Um, what does it mean, degree programme? Oh, uh, just if you are an undergraduate or a postgraduate. Or maybe you're just here for a short course? I'm a postgraduate. Oh. Uh, do I need to say what in? Not really. It's too much detail. But you should put your department so people who have the same interests or problems as you can get in touch. So I'm studying marine construction, so... For department, do I put down the science faculty then? Uh, just your actual department. That must be engineering, no? Oh, I see, yes. Then if you list what you like doing in your free time, not that we ever get any when we're studying, <laughs> and maybe you can meet up with someone socially or to join a club or something. Well, I like lots of things. Shall I just list them? Um, my advice is to just put one or two, like football and films or whatever. Otherwise, you'll get so many invitations, you won't get any time to work. OK. I think I'll just list computer games, as that's my big interest. Oh. I haven't played football for ages. <laughs> I may start to play once I get settled. Now, let's see. Next thing is languages. Yes. We find many of the international students get a bit tired of speaking English all the time. Sometimes they like to speak to someone in their own language. It's up to you. That is a good idea. I presume I don't need to put English down. Oh, no. <laughs> I put um, Italian and French. <laughs> I can only speak German, my mother tongue. OK, well, that's fine. Just put that. Uh... What does accommodation mean? Is that my address? We're trying to find similarities between people and some people live in hall, some are in flats, some are in bedsits. So it helps if you say. I'm in hall, though I'd like to be in a flat, but that won't happen till the end of the first term. Put where you are now. You can always change it later. Uh, then finally, just put your phone number. I haven't really got one. I haven't sorted out a mobile yet. Well, it's going to be difficult for people to contact you then, isn't it? Mm. Why don't you put the union one and we'll take messages for you. OK. It's 02950659003. Have you got that? Uh... Yes. OK, then. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 7 to 10.
Oh, I had a couple more questions about the services you've got here. Um, it says there's a photocopier here. Yes. You need to get a card from the shop, and then it's available to all students in the mornings. The union uses it after 1 pm. Okay. I see also the union organises loads of events. Are they always held here in the union building? It looks big enough. <laughs> If you're interested in something, you should check the poster or our website. In fact, we normally use the Round Theatre, opposite the conference centre, for most events, because the sound system is better. Right, I'll do that. Also, I wanted to hire a van. Can I do that through you? Um, no. You need to present a case, really.、Oh. They're not just available for hire to anyone.、Mm. The president said we have to limit who is allowed to hire them. The person you need to see is the transport secretary. She's on the second floor. Okay, thanks. The other thing is, are all the discounts we get with our union card listed on the back of the card? I thought there might be more. No, that's it, I'm afraid. Mainly books, clothes, and music. Though we are currently negotiating to get one on newspapers, so that should be valid from next term. Okay, thanks a lot for your help. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a man giving some information about transport in London. You now have thirty seconds to read questions eleven to fifteen. Hello. Can I help you? Ah、oh, yes. I was wondering what the best way was for me to get around London. Well, there are a lot of possibilities. As you probably realise, the main ways to get around are bus, train, and tube. Oh. The underground. Oh. It depends how much you want to spend.、Mm. All forms of transport offer special tickets, such as cheap day returns on the trains and so on. Overall, you'll spend less on the bus as it operates on a basic flat fare for each journey.、Mm -hmm. But of course, it may not go to where you need to travel to.、Oh. The mainline trains only operate in the outlying areas, though a few cross London. Whereas the tube has stations which are placed in central areas of the city, close to the main sites and shops.、Mm. Obviously, there are more bus stops.、Uh, But you will probably have to change buses to get where you want, which can be inconvenient. <sighs> you will find that the buses are mainly in the central areas, but some tube lines go quite a long way out of London, so you could use this for longer journeys.、Mm -hmm. Having said that, the tubes do get very crowded, so you should use the train if you want to sit down. <sighs> It does depend where you're travelling to. Well, I'm living on the outskirts, but I have to travel into London to college every day, and then around London when I'm here.、Mm. Okay, so time is going to be an issue for you.、Mm. The tube should be fast crossing London, but quite honestly, there are so many delays that it's not very efficient. 
Again, the train has fewer stops, so is probably your quickest option to get to and from college. <sighs> of course, which service you use might depend on how frequent it is. I mean, the trains might only be every 20 minutes or whatever, but a timetable is published to save you hanging around. <sighs> There are a lot of tube trains at busy times of day, but fewer at other times, whereas the buses run every five minutes through most of the day, and there are night buses. But you'll need to check out your route first. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 16 to 20. OK, thanks. How can I get from here to Hackney, then? Right, well, you can choose. Uh, we're here at the information office, OK? Uh, now, next to us, on the corner of the High Street and Sweet Street, is the bus stop, opposite the bank. Uh -huh. The bus goes all the way to Hackney, but it is a very indirect route, so it could take ages. Uh. If you want to take the train, walk down the High Street towards the city. Go past the bank, and on your left is the station, mm -hmm. just before you get to the post office. Mm. There's a mainline service to Hackney Wick, so if you need to get into the centre of Hackney, you may need to pick up a bus when you get there. Mm. Opposite the post office, on the corner of Hart Lane, is the tube entrance. You'll see the big signs. That's probably the best way to get there, though you may have to change. It's probably best if you go and get a travel card first. <sighs> to get to the ticket office, you go out of here onto the High Street. Then turn into South Street, and the ticket office is on your right opposite the cinema. Mm. Of course, you may decide it's quicker to take a taxi. <laughs> but it's a long way, so I think it'll be very expensive. If you do want to get a cab, then the rank is outside here, just opposite the office. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You are going to listen to a conversation between a tutor and two students. In the first part of the discussion, they talk about a fellow student. First, look at questions 21 to 23. As you listen, answer the questions. Write no more than two words for each answer. Ah, Francis and Steve, hi. Now, before we start the tutorial, am I right in thinking that you haven't heard about Lorraine? No. What about her? Um, she's already left. What? Well, she hasn't told anyone. You sound surprised. Weren't you half expecting it? Yes, but she could at least have told us, though. We've been on the course together for the past three years, and it would have been nice to know. 
She always was the sort to keep herself to herself. Yes, I know what you mean. Did she give any reason? Well, she got that job. What? Yes, and she's been given permission to leave, as there's only a week to go before the end of the course. But she'll be back for the exam week. Oh well, we'll just have to catch her on the mobile after the class. She's gone back to Wales first. Oh dear. We'll get hold of her on the mobile. She did say that it might not be possible to contact her for a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. If that is what she wants. Before the conversation continues, look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen to the second part of the discussion. The tutor and the two students are talking about assessment marks. For questions twenty-four to thirty, there are four alternatives: A, B, C, and D. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer, and circle the correct letter. Right to work. We're here to look at your assessment marks for your coursework. I take it you haven't seen them yet. No, <laughs> not yet. Well, you'll both be pleased. In fact, very pleased. Yes. Francis, you have come out with the top mark in the year. Oh. You have, in fact, got a starred first. Wow. Aren't you pleased, Francis? Yes, I'm just speechless. <laughs> And、um, what about me? Well, Steve, you got a first as well. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> you might have done even better, but there were a few faults with the five thousand word project you did on traffic management. And what about the book review we had to do? Yours was, I can safely say, the best we have ever had. <laughs> You're kidding! I'm not. In fact, you have won the departmental prize for the piece. It's a pity, really, that your project wasn't of the same caliber. It's still not bad at all, though, is it? It certainly isn't. What do you think were the faults with your project?、Uh, I just wasn't very happy with the conclusion, and I got myself in a bit of a twist with the argument about road pricing. By and large, your overall conclusions were okay, and I would say that your thoughts on road pricing were quite original. The problem was more with the actual end. It was a bit disappointing. You started off well, but then it ended rather suddenly, as if you got fed up with it. <laughs> yes, I did kind of stop fairly abruptly. I couldn't think of much to say, even though I knew it was important. Yes, that section needed a bit more work on it. But as I said, by and large, it was very good. And Francis,、mm -hmm. your project was excellent, so much so that we think you should take it further and perhaps do a PhD or at least an MPhil. What do you think? Um, <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it. I've just been concerned with getting through this final year and getting all the coursework and exams out of the way. I can understand that. But I do think that you ought to consider it seriously. If you perform as well in your exams as in your project work, you're on course for a first. Do you think that I'd get funding for it? Well, any grant will be discretionary, but you have as good a chance as anyone else. I'd even say a much better one.、Mm. If you do get a first, it'll be the only one we've had in this department for three years. And I'd be happy to be your supervisor. Thanks, I'd like that. Do you think I should start applying for it now, or wait until after the exams? I think you must really start thinking about it as soon as you can.、Mm. And Steve, what about you? Have you thought about going on to do research? I have thought about it, but I have a job lined up if I get a good degree, 
And quite honestly, I am fed up with not having enough money to do the things I would like to do. <laughs> I can understand that. Is there anything that either of you would like to talk about? Yeah. I have a couple of things I'd like to ask, if you don't mind. OK. We have roughly、uh, 20 minutes left. So, Steve, would you like to go first? Right.、Um... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a lecturer talking about the importance of laughter. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40 on page 131. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, everybody. And in our second talk on social psychology, I want to look at the role of laughter in our lives, something that usually gets everyone smiling from the start. So, first of all, I'll start by looking at the actual nature of laughter. Well, when someone laughs, you've got movement of the muscles of the face and the chest. And you've got sound formed when the air is forced out of the body as part of this process. So we're talking about a physical activity. But obviously, other things are involved as well. And this is where it gets more complicated. Laughing isn't something that you normally decide to do. So it's not voluntary behaviour like ordinary speech. Instead, it's regulated by our instincts, rather like the singing of a bird or the roaring of a lion. And once you start to laugh, it can be quite hard to stop. <laughs> That's not always under your conscious control either. But why do we laugh? Because we find something funny, most of us would say. But in fact, it appears that laughter has little to do with jokes or funny stories. Only about 10% of laughter is caused by things like that. One suggestion is that human laughter may have originally started out as a shared response to signal relief at the passing of danger. And it's true that even these days, laughter is rarely an activity carried out by an individual on his or her own. In fact, people are 30 times more likely to laugh when they're with other people than when they're completely alone. Laughter still seems to be a kind of social signal. It occurs when people are in a group and they're comfortable with one another. And it seems likely that laughter can result in the creation of bonds between the people in the group. And it's precisely because of this social aspect of laughter that people like public speakers and politicians often try to get their audience to laugh. It encourages their listeners to trust them and to connect with them. But this kind of thing, controlling the laughter of a group, that is, Indicates that there's a link between laughter and power, and this is supported by several studies that indicate that bosses use humour more than their employees. And research has also shown that female listeners are likely to laugh much more if the speaker is male. So it appears that there are gender issues associated with how much we laugh. I should also point out that laughter can be used as a negative signal as well as a positive one. I think we've all probably seen evidence of a group using laughter to exclude someone, to emphasise that they are not accepted. So it's not always a positive type of behaviour either. So what all this goes to show is that laughter is a very, very complex issue.
It does appear, however, that laughter has definite benefits. If we look first at the psychological aspects, we know that people often tend to store negative emotions such as anger, sadness, and fear, rather than expressing them. And it seems that laughter provides a harmless way for the release of these emotions. But there are also clear physical effects that have been monitored too. For example, laughter is good aerobic exercise. It speeds up heart rate and respiration and raises blood pressure. One researcher suggests that a hundred laughs a day is the equivalent of ten minutes jogging. Laughter also helps prevent the stress that so many people suffer from today, which results from the faster pace of life and all that goes with it. It does this by reducing the levels of hormones in the blood which are caused by stress. And in addition, it is known to increase the levels of chemicals that protect the body from infection or pain, and so it helps to boost the immune system. One interesting study showed that people who had had surgical operations asked for fewer painkillers if they'd been viewing comic films. In fact, research has even shown that the quality of dreams can be positively affected by laughter. A good laugh ten minutes before going to sleep can prevent you from having bad dreams and give a much more pleasant and restorative night's sleep. So there's now little argument that finding things funny and enjoying a good laugh is extremely beneficial to us all. What we need to consider now are the ways in which laughter can be used as a treatment for people who. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.